Hey, how are we doing? It's Ben from EQL Networks and Security. Today we're looking at Darwa's latest 8 megapixel TIOC 2.0 active deterrence turret fixed camera. That's a mouthful. You know, this is a powerful surveillance camera that is packed with unique features that set it apart from other cameras in the market. You know, the part number for this camera is actually going to be listed here. If you're new to this channel and like what you see here, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. While you're at it, hit us up in that comment sections below for any questions you may have. So, let's start with the camera specifications. So first up, this camera is equipped with an 8 megapixel 1.28 inch uh, sense CMOS image sensor, which provides low luminance and high definition image. You know, this ensures that even in low light conditions, the camera can capture clear and detailed images. The camera is capable of outputting a maximum of 8 megapixels or 3840 by 2160 at 25 to 30 frames per second. It also utilizes the H.265 codec, which basically provides high compression rates and ultra, ultra low bit rates. You know, essentially making it easier to store and transfer footage um, without sacrificing any of that image quality. The Dawa camera itself features a built-in warm light uh, and IR LED, and it provides a maximum IR distance of 30 meters, and in the warm light, also it's at 30 meters basically means the capture can capture clear images even in complete darkness. In addition, this camera also has like intelligent monitoring capabilities, intrusion detection, and even tripwire. You know, these features support the uh, classification and allows accurate detection of vehicles and humans. Uh, camera also supports, uh, has an alarm input and an output and a maximum two, of 256 gigabits of a uh, micro SD card and has built-in mics and a speaker. Um, the other thing it has is two-way talking. You know, this allows for communication between the camera and also remote viewing. So basically from the app, you can talk at the same time. Uh, the Dawa camera itself can be either powered by 12 volts DC or PoE. And is protected by an IPC, IPC, IP67 rating, which means it can withstand, you know, various weather conditions. Finally, the camera features this sound and light alarm. Um, this basically utilizes the red and blue lights to deter intruders and offers the, uh, the smart motion detection 4.0 now. Um, this filters out large animals in the scene and avoids having those false triggers. You know, this camera ensures that, the, that it provides, you know, effective deterrence against potential intruders. These particular model comes in a 2.8 and 3.6 mil as well. So let's look at some Dory specs. So it's able to detect at 91 meters, observe at 36.4, uh, recognize at 18.2, and identify at 9.1. So before we dive into the performance of this camera, if you're new to this channel and like what you see here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. If any other questions or comments, don't be afraid to hit us up in the comment sections below. So enough of this talking, let's go see how this camera performs in day and night. So first up, we got the uh, day test here. Uh, so if you look at the picture itself, it's actually, it looks a bit blurry here for some reason. Um, but overall the colours and stuff are pretty well uh, good. But then what we'll do is we'll just jump straight into a walk test. And if we freeze it there, um, you clearly see colours, facial features and also um, some lettering. So next up, we'll do a walk test. Uh, and as we go, freeze it there. Uh, you, even at that distance, you can still make out some facial features uh, and definitely make out colors and identifying features. So now we'll do some digital zooming in. So just go over here. So if we look over here, you can clearly make out number plate uh, letters and so forth through here. Just zoom this out, we'll zoom into the middle. Uh, even at that distance there, which is probably about 18 meters or so, uh, you can see and clearly make out uh, lettering and numbers there. Just zoom in here on the right. Once again, you can clearly see that. And then we'll do one more zoom out. Uh, we'll just zoom into the tree line here, which is probably about 30 meters away. And once again, out there, you're not really going to see any clear identification, uh, but you will get to see and observe things happening at that particular distance. Next, we're just going to jump into like a intrusion 
detection. Uh, so this is basically a, an IBS rule that you draw up on the camera. Uh, and then from here, you'll be able to, when, when a human or vehicle is detected in here, um, you can actually start setting off uh, sirens and strobes. So you can see there it's picked up a human, which is myself. Uh, and if we freeze it there, you clearly see it's picked it up as it's entered that intrusion box. So we'll just do kind of a bit of a walk. Yep, once again, it has picked me yep, up and freeze it there. Yep, clearly see things, it's picked someone up. Uh, and as you continue walking, So next one up we're gonna do is basically, this is purely IR uh, only. So you can see it's not super clear, a little bit grainy. Uh, and then we freeze it there, which is about four meters away. Um, you can make out some identifying features, but everything else is kind of just washed out at this particular point. Do another walk test. We freeze it there. This particular point, you will not see anything uh, whatsoever. Just you'll just know that someone is around in the area. We'll zoom in to the left there. You can't see anything because of the IRs reflecting off the number plate. Zooming on to the middle. So in here you can kind of make out some numbering and lettering, um, but it's also because there's no reflective material on that particular board. And over here, once again, same as the left, you just can't see anything because of the reflection of the IR bouncing off the number plates. And in the tree line, you won't be able to see anything there at all. So this next one is what we call drill elimination. So it's IR and white light on at the same time. Um, picture quality itself, it's pretty much exactly the same as the IR, can't really see much of a difference. Once again, we'll do a walk test. Yeah, same, same as before, pretty much identical to the IR. You can make out some facial features, but you've got to get them to stay in still to capture anything. Another walk test about eight to 10 meters away. Freeze it there. No, you're not gonna see anything once again, just purely for observing that there is someone in the area. Next up, we'll do a zoom in test. Once again, it's uh, blurred out because of the reflection. You cannot see any numbering whatsoever. Pretty much the same as before. And then on the right here, once again, number plates are all blurred out, so you're not gonna actually see anything. And just in the tree line, can't see anything. It's just a blurred mess. You'd be even struggling to see anything happening at that particular distance there. So now the next one here is just purely white light only. So the IR is being turned off. Now we'll just jump into a walk test here. Now you can see there's a lot of ghosting happening here as well. We freeze it there. It's not too bad, like you can make out identifying features. You can even make out lettering and stuff on the jumper now. Now what we'll do is we'll do another walk test here. You see there's a lot of ghosting, freeze it there. Uh, you will not make out any identifying features there whatsoever. Do a zoom in test. Same thing as the previous two tests, um, except you can see colors now. Up in the middle. 
This is actually a lot different. You can actually start to see now uh, the letterings and numbers. Zoom to the right. Once again, can't see any number plate lettering, uh, just purely colors and identification now. Zoom into the tree line. Starting to get a little bit more definition here, um, but not a lot. Maybe lucky to see if something's happening out of that particular distance. So this is the next test, which is no illumination, and the camera is basically set to full-time color. But we'll jump into a walk test. Once again, you can see a fair bit of ghosting happening. Uh, if we freeze it there, kind of make out some identifying features. Um, lettering on the jump is a bit harder to see, but you still can make out and see uh, identifying colors of what the person would be wearing. Next up, we'll do a bit of a, a walk test here, which is eight to 10 meters away. Lots of ghosting, freeze it there. You won't see anything once again, just so much ghosting uh, that no identifying features will be able to, to happen. So this time now, you can see colors, can clearly see lettering and number plates. Zoom into the middle. This one's a little bit different. You can kind of make out the numbers and letters, but nowhere near as clear as when it was in full color. We'll jump out to the right here. Clearly see the number plates as well. Um, picture's not as sharp, but you know, you probably get more detail in identifying features here. Then we'll zoom into the top. Same thing, a um, little bit better here. You can see some colors. Uh, you'll be able to definitely see if someone's around or floating around in that area. So this is no illumination and just is purely set to black and white only. And this, you can just see here, you can see a lot of ghosting as well. If we freeze it there, densifying features are, you know, hit and miss here. You can't see any lettering on the jumpers as well. And the downside of this is you can't really see what's happening as far as colors is concerned as well. Now this point here, another walk test, lots of ghosting once again. Freeze it there. No, can't see anything. Um, all you're going to see once again is just someone's floating around. Can't see anything there once we've zoomed in. It's actually probably better when it's zoomed out to see what uh, the number plate is. Jump into the middle. Can't see anything there whatsoever. This particular point, there's no real benefit to having just black and white. Over here, this particular point, you can see the number plate, um, but you saw that with the color as well. So we'll just jump into here. This is probably worse than the color. You can't really see anything uh, at that particular distance. So in this next test, uh, what we're going to do is show you the intrusion detection, how well it works at night. Um, camera set to, uh, what's the camera set to? Basically black and white only. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll do a, a walk test and see how well it picks us up. AI hasn't picked up. Let's see how well, there we go. Picks it up. Uh, flashing lights go off, sirens go off. Uh, so it's clearly picked someone moving even when there's a little bit of ghosting happening as well. Next what we'll do is another walk test. You can see there it didn't pick anything up. There we go. That was quite delayed. It did eventually pick someone up um, but it's most likely due to the ghosting happening and that's probably about eight to ten meters away at that particular point. So this next test uh, this is just to white light only. So once again, we're testing the intrusion uh, detection happening here, which is the same settings as it was before. 
you see motion blur, not picking up anything, not picking up anything. Wow, there we go. Probably only picked up about four meters away. Um, really delayed there, and it's most likely because the AI can't actually pick up it's a person due to the motion blur. Just do another walk test, which is about eight to 10 meters away. Uh, picked me up, there you go. So even at that point, it did pick up. Funny enough, took a little bit longer to pick up, um, but still managed to pick up that there was a person uh, walking. So same test we'll do again. This time it is with uh, basically no illumination set to full-time color. Uh, so we'll see how this intrusion detection works on this particular setting. So again, you get that motion blur. Nothing. Nothing. And it did not pick up whatsoever. There we go. Wow, that was really delayed on the full-time color. Let's do another test here. You can see it's not picking anything up. Yeah, full-time color, really late for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure why the AI is picking it up so late. So it does pick it up, uh, not picking it up quick enough, uh, but eventually it does pick it up. We'll just try it a little bit again. So I'm trying to move back in again. Yeah, there's nothing there at all. Let's just see what happens next after this. That particular time, it didn't pick up anything at all. So at this particular setting, the AI has just gone can't nowhere near as good uh, as previous settings. Just really not seeing any, maybe because of the motion blur there. Can't actually determine if there's someone walking. So it's a really bit of a hit and miss here with the AI um, when we set it to this, you know, uh, no illumination, so to speak. So next up, here we go as a screenshot grab of all the settings you ask we got. So the IR, dual illumination. So you see dual illumination, you probably see a little bit more facial detail. And then you start going into the white light. Um, you know, full color and then no illumination. So a bit of a difference between the two. Um, at this particular point, the best thing you're probably gonna see is between the dual illumination and the white light only is probably the best identifying features. Uh, how we get the downsides with one or the other as you saw with the AI. What we'll do is we'll jump into the next one. Um, so at this particular setting at the eight to 10 meter range, you're really not gonna see any identifying features whatsoever. So it really depends if you're trying to capture color, you're just trying to observe here. Um, but if you're trying to really get number plates and real facial recognition or details, uh, it's not gonna happen on, on these cameras and you'd be pretty hard pressed trying to find it on any other camera. Um, especially if you don't have any form of illumination happening. So basically that's it for this video. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And while you're at it, hit us up in the comment section for any questions you may have. ADQL, always here to help and support your business.